AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. It's the Matt McNeil Show. Linda Lagarde Grover is kind enough to join us. Uh, novels, the, the Road Back to Sweetgrass, The Night of Memory. Uh, they came after her debut to- story collection, the, da- the Dance Boots. And uh, she's also written a poetry collection, The Sky Watched, and a book uh, blending memoir history and Ojibwe tradition as well. She's a professor emerita at American Indian Studies at the University of Minnesota Duluth and a member of the Boys Fort Band of Ojibwe. Her latest book, A Song Over Misqua Rapids, is out right now, a novel. Uh, Linda Lagarde Grover is kind enough to join us to talk about the book. Hi, Linda. How are you? Well, hi, Matt. I'm fine. Thank you for inviting me to be on your show. Well, thank you for being here. And by the way, just FYI, I have been on your fine campus quite a bit lately. My daughter is a freshman up there this year. And so, yeah, and she's and she's she is taking a Native American studies class this term. And she she's talked about how much she's enjoyed uh, learning. it. I don't know if she's taking it with you, but uh, I think that that is I, I'm really glad these studies, as she has said, it's like, how come we never heard of any of this in high school? That's what I know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How come indeed? Well, I'll be teaching next semester, not this semester. So mm-hmm. next semester I'll be teaching the art class. And so the wow. native art class, so maybe she'll be in that one. Well, I'll, well, I'll give her a hint. Yeah. I'll give her a hint this. Yeah. Um, so I, when, I, when we talk about novels, I'm, I'm, I want to get into this. This is the, uh, the third novel to touch on an imaginary uh, Ojibwe reservation. And I'm going to hopefully say it's Mose Point. As I said correctly, Moje. Moje Point. Moje. Mo- Moje mm-hmm. Point. Uh, this is the site you've had in, well, it's, it's in the two novels, but as well, it's something that apparently. Uh, showed up in your original debut story collection, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, it is also in the dance boots, and yeah, it's uh, it's not a real reservation. It's in northern Minnesota, mostly northeastern Minnesota. It's uh, we we don't know exactly where it is, but we know it's up up near near the Iron Range somewhere. It's um, very much like Boys Fort. And it's also very much like the Fond du Lac Reservation just outside of Duluth and the Grand Portage that's up near Canada, up the North Shore. But it's it's imaginary. Well, well it, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking the Net Lake Indiv- uh, Reservation up there as well. It's, uh, that's up uh, uh, by Pelican. And, and so- yes, it is. So Net Lake and Boys Fort. Net Lake and Boys Fort and Vermilion. Um, I, they're kind of interchangeable, but Boys Fort is the name of the band, and then Net Lake and Vermilion are uh, locations. Okay. The mm-hmm. when let me ask you this: where did, where did the location? Did you, did you start as a writer, a creative writer? Where did the, the this whole this whole scene come to mind? How did you start building that within your story process? Well, I was writing poetry when I was working on my dissertation quite a while ago, I guess, and then um, that kind of got interwoven with the research I was doing, um, interview projects about people who had attended American Indian boarding schools, and my family was a boarding school family, and we have a pretty pretty extensive history there, and when I got done with my dissertation, um, actually Tom Peacock, who was the chair of my committee, asked if I had ever written fiction, and, and I hadn't. <laughs> but I thought, well, maybe I'll maybe I'll do that. So that was where I began, and I found actually that, you know, it's all about stories anyway. And recounting history, for me, I I found that fiction was a a way to do it that kind of kept a little bit of a distance between real event, real people, and um, and it just uh, it gave it gave me. Um, in telling the story, I think a, a freedom to do some things and to also, you know, stay, stay, take good care. Weweni is the word, you know, carefully, carefully in sharing our histories in current ways. Whenever I talk to a, a writer uh, that's writing fiction, I always enjoy it because it's, you know, it, there, there's, the, and just in the same way, so the amount of way people approach painting a picture, there's a thousand different ways to go in there. And it's always interesting to hear from the artist about how they see this sort of thing. Same thing for writers. Because, you know, it is interesting that I, there are writers I've talked with where they create the scene, they create the place, they create the, the town, the, the reservation, and that's where they start with. Sometimes it creates the people, and then they write around that. And I think that it, it, it sometimes is a challenge. 
But if, I've always found with writers, they always have – when it comes to writing novels, and the fact that you, this is your third – you know, it, it shows you that you once you get that base foundation, you you know, you know, you've tied the boat to the dock per se. You know, it becomes easier to uh, to be able to write the characters and flesh out the story even better because you've you've got your nice foundation. There is the foundation, and I think that the the characters and the stories kind of um, they emerge. So I I don't really have a whole lot of um, power over over these things they they just kind of i write and they happen as i write actually my um my stories um a lot of them well i mean a young woman just kind of happened when i was i would i watch tv sometimes when mm-hmm. i write and watching the news and um and um on my laptop as i was typing this young woman it's like she stepped into the room and so um things kind of went from there and she figures pretty strongly in this most recent um, novel. This is my fourth book of fiction, and I, I think she's been in three of them. But the di- the difference is on this one is um, in previous works she was a very young girl um, trying to find her way in the world. In another she was a middle aged lady trying to cope with the world, and now in this one she is an elder, and she is still trying to cope with changes and maintaining maintaining the good ways and it's really tied into the land and the terrain to um to retain the um you know all that the land gives us but we have our obligations too to care for it and that's what she's trying to do she's not the main character here but she's very figures very heavily there are two, you know a couple st- several stories that interweave in this one but the theme of the land and the and the land and the terrain, I mean, the animals and birds, everybody who lives on it, that, that's an entity in itself in this book. Mm-hmm. Much as I enjoy Margie and what she's doing here as an, as an elder. And, and Margie Robineau, is the, the, that's the character, correct, that, that you're referring to? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is, is, is it, I mean, obviously, and I've talked to once again, I've talked to a lot of writers about this, there's got to be a bit of fun in living a life through an, a character. As you said, you started off with a younger version of a Margie and now here, you know, the character is older, you know, but what you just presented when you said all of a sudden, you know, Margie was in the room with you and that was that character there. It, it, that must be like flowing water. It just it, it, it sounds like that character herself just really manifested itself and has, has been able to make it make writing the rest of the book easy. Is that a fair way to say it? Well, yeah, I guess, um, you know, it's it's not easy so much as it is fun <laughs> yeah, yes. no forgive me yes you writing a book is not easy i've always i've always it's, it's a, very complicated yes but it's fun it's more fun than what chocolate cake i guess it's wow it's... <laughs> <laughs> now, now we're now we're writing some checks okay <laughs> well and you know there is the other world figures into this book too yes there are, you know, Margie is a very young woman, you know, interacted with people who are no longer, you know, on the living side of things. And so the spirit world exists here at the same time that we're here, while at, while at the same time these people are in the next world. So it's a leap of faith kind of thing. And so there's, a, there's a, several of the women who are, you know, Iban, they are no longer... Uh, living in the body, but they are here um, commenting and trying to um, perhaps sometimes influencing how things how things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted one thing I do want to mention a few times here. Uh, you're going to be celebrating the publication of Song Over Miskwell Rapids. Uh, you're going to be at Birch Bark Books and their new downtown Minneapolis event space. This is at sixteen twenty nine Hennepin Avenue. Uh, number tw- room twenty uh, two seventy five. This is going to be on Wednesday, November fifteenth at seven p.m. And I'll make sure I link. I imagine uh, University of Minnesota Press is going to have that linked. I'll make sure I link that out there for everyone that wants to go and see oh, this. Oh yeah. Uh, by all means, coming up here. Um, one of the things I've learned to do. I'm going to allow you to take the stage here because I don't like surmising fiction. Sometimes people want me to talk a lot about what the plot is. Sometimes people don't want to talk about it at all. So if I may, why don't you give a, just what as much as you're comfortable a synopsis a little bit of the uh, a song for Miss Gore, uh, over, a song over Miss Gore Rapids. Well, the robins are waking at dawn or even before dawn, and they're looking down at Moje Point and. 
you know, the lands of Sweetgrass, which is uh, Margie Robineau's family's land allotment, held for many, many decades. And the Robins then are watching what's going on, and, the, um, and life begins to happen as, as the sun comes up. There's, going, there's, a, there's kind of a conflict coming up over the land and who will be on the land and who, you know, it gives you, me thought to who has, who has the right to be on the land and what does the land think of all this and the ancestors. And so in Margie, in trying to maintain and, and preserve things, has a story that is linked with a good friend of hers, Dale Ann, who has a story from the past that is... Um, all of a sudden um, coming to the surface. And I, I was talking to a friend of mine lately. I said, you know those stories that you hope won't come to the surface when you're in your 70s? <laughs> and we, we both were laughing. But, but, you know, the thing is things that must be dealt with, too. And what, what does it all mean? We, we never know, but we know that there, um, that there is um, a life on the other side here that, is, um, that was there corp- in a corporal way before and is still with us spiritually. So what what is going to happen with Dale Ann trying to um, trying to keep her life in good order when this when this event is coming back up and there's a mystery there and what will happen and how does that tie into Margie Robineau and you know her her long time uh, crush I think on a on a man in, a man at uh, Moje who um, just simply a nice man, but just simply doesn't love her back in that same way over a lifetime. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, perfect. By the way, perfect there. And I mean, I like how you alluded to the conflict. I'm not going to say another thing, uh, but I mean, it, 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 it's a, it's a great story idea, uh, you know? And, and so, I mean, what I want to ask you, because as I mentioned with my daughter, I mean, you know, here she is, you know, she comes out of Hopkins High School. She goes to UMD. She's like, wow, I wish we had some Native American studies in our, our high school days. You, When you write a story uh, that is obviously the characters and the, the locale are uh, you're basically centered around Native American community and Native American characters, it, it must be difficult but also invigorating because you're able to present a, a piece of America – that we most people just don't see the Native American, the life of the Native Americans on the reservations. So you have this ability to present this to the people, but obviously, I imagine for yourself, it's 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 a little bit intimidating because you want to make sure that you present the the Native American scene and culture correctly, and and you know, in in, in as in much of a traditional light as possible. Is that is that a fair way to say it? Well, we certainly have our obligations as Native people to. Um, to be, you know, always very conscious of and respectful of, you know, what what it means for us having. We're we're really lucky because we're here today, and many of the people in the generations before us had such difficult times, and some survived and some didn't. But in but you know the the great meaning is that to to honor them and to honor this life. You know, we certainly want to. We want to do, you know, do things properly and in a way that would honor them and that they, you know, hopefully would like. And so I just, you know, I, I, I write stuff and then I go back and read it again and again and, you know, make some little changes and curly cues. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I keep my, I keep my own um, ancestors in mind, I guess. You know, my aunts and uncles, my grandmothers, grandfathers, my dad. I keep that in mind. And, you know, my my dad, you know, paid me a great compliment once. And he's, you know, he's not among the living anymore either. But he was reading something and he said, you you know, you really, you really like, write like, like an Indian would talk. And, I mean, that was just, and that just meant so much to me that he would that he would say that and to be encouraging to me in that way. And, and it's it's wonderful because I mean, there's and I think that you know in with with white culture there's a tendency of thinking things of satellites and they're not you know kind of this but native stories are um, human stories and you know people I mean, the the reality is is that people can get a lot from these stories that that just because you're presenting it there and showing that you know that no matter where you're at these human feelings are there these you know and they might be different. 
but they're there. And I think that that making it relatable is one great way. And I've been very happy with the University of Minnesota Press. I got to tell you the truth. Uh, they have yeah. been the last few years, they have been putting out a lot of great Native American books. And I think that with with the 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 in the the now you know, interest in Native American art, Native American literature, I think we're starting to see some changes, albeit slow, to making sure that the the Native history and the Native stories are part of all stories. But I, I think that that's one of the great things about books like this is that it it basically it, it just these are all human stories. There's just different perspectives, and I think that's an important thing to keep in there. Oh yes, universal themes. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a you know a, a love of each other. Um, we're all walking around here on this planet. You know, yeah. There there are universal things, and and you know our stories. You know, our our sacred stories and our historical stuff. I mean, this is all present and and alive really and you know whether whether it is um uh whether it is seen and acknowledged by you know outside of indian country doesn't doesn't change the the reality of it and you know i'm i'm very very appreciative of the university of minnesota press for for all the many things that they've that they've been publishing and you know some of the stuff like from well from stacy droulard up in grand portage um some of the beautiful things she's done i mean i think it's just wonderful that it's it's out there for a for a, a very broad group of readers and you know it's a it's a it's a keeping and honoring of history and then a sharing of history yes. and contemporary culture in an in an appropriate way yeah I, i'm congratulations on this i'm going to ask are there other novels in the works at this point oh i'm always working on something <laughs> i i have bits and pieces of things all the time and then when they um then when i when i ha see that there's something that might fit together then i try to create a coherent story out of it <laughs> <laughs> uh well once again if you would like to meet linda you can uh, this is going to be once again uh, over at Birch Bark Books, their new downtown Minneapolis event space, 1629 Hennepin Avenue, number 275. This is going to be on Wednesday, November 15th uh, at 7 p.m., so you can go catch her over there. Go pick up the book, A Song Over Misquil Rapids. Linda Lagarde Grover is the book there. And then, of course, also I want to make sure you mention uh, The Road Back to Sweetgrass and In the Night of Memory, both of those books as well. Uh, part of the, these novels. So go get all three of them and, and enjoy them and then go meet her. That's a, a really cool way to do it too. Uh, thank Linda, you. thank you very much. I, 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 I'm I going to pressure my daughter to take this class, the, the Native American art class next term. Hopefully she does. Hopefully she can she can get in there. But uh, just absolute pleasure chatting with you. When your next book comes out, you're more than welcome. Please come on back. Oh, goodness, I'd love to. Thank you very much, Matt. It was great talking with you. Miigwech. Thank you very much. Linda Lagrard Grover is kind enough once again to join us. A song over Miskwa Rapids. We'll take a break, wrap up the show when we do return. It's the Matt McNeil Show on AM 950.